What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Day and I'm a security engineer. And today I wanted to just make a video about some realities about being a cybersecurity engineer. I know as a cybersecurity industry or community, we tend to really glorify, you know, having cool jobs, doing all these really cool things, whether you're an engineer or an analyst or a researcher, whatever the case is. And I think we over glorify like, you know, those cool things that we do, but no one really seems to talk about the non-cool things, the real things that are also a major part of the job that we have as cybersecurity professionals, mainly cybersecurity engineers. I've been a cybersecurity engineer now for a couple of years, and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for close to five years now. So I definitely have a lot of experience in various roles in regards to like working as an engineer and also previously working as an analyst. And this video is going to be completely unscripted. I have a couple of notes down here, and I'm just going to share my personal experience. And I think some things that some people out there would actually relate to in regards to being a security engineer, or maybe just whatever else in cybersecurity. Let's just get right into it. All right, the very first thing is some days would just be mainly admin work. Of course, you get to do all the cool research, engineering things, automation, cloud, whatever the case may be. But some days you're barely going to be doing admin work, working in Excel sheets, replying to emails, being in meetings, doing writing, you know, docs or wikis, reviewing documents, planning a project, writing an RFC, whatever the case is. Like some days you're just going to purely just be doing admin stuff. Some days are just like straight up admin stuff. And that is normal normal because although we have to build things, you know, engineer solutions, solve problems, we also have to maintain things, maintain docs, maintain processes, maintain relationships, maybe other people, especially if you're remote. And yeah, some days it's just admin work and that's just the reality of things. Some days you don't really get to do engineering stuff, but it's all part of the job. Second thing is regardless of whatever organization you're in, regardless of how perfect things may be, regardless, regardless of the level of technology that you might have, some things are still going to be very, very painful. Like I've worked at some major companies like engineering wise or cybersecurity wise and as advanced as you know whatever company you're working at may be as skilled or as you know filled with the most brilliant people <laughs> ever you might have in that company some things in your organization might just be very very painful uh very tedious some things no matter how much you try to automate them there's still going to be some very very painful pain points in your engineering jobs i don't think anyone would disagree with this because i know that regardless of whatever organization you're in, nothing is perfect. Like there's nothing perfect about any organization, except if you actually just have that job, you know, I have that role. But I also think it's like kind of a two edged sword in the sense that those things that are, you know, painful or tedious or whatever the case may be, are always opportunities for improvement, process improvement, and, you know, just making things better and opportunity for you to even make some change at your organization. But I don't think there's any perfect organization and I don't think there's any perfect security team, perfect security organization, because some things are just going to be either very painful painful. Some things are not even going to be possible because of like regulatory or compliance requirements, engineering infrastructure. And yeah, like some things are just very painful and you just have to either deal with it or keep talking to your leadership about it or actually work on a solution to it. I've done that a couple of times and I, I think it's always an opportunity to like solve problems and get better build relationships and just make things less painful. The third thing is the job is very mentally tasking, right? Like I have conversations with people all the time who don't work in like like knowledge based fields. So like nurses or people in like more like physical labor intensive fields. And you know, they try to like be like, oh, like, you know, what we're doing is like super stressful and all that. And I, and I completely agree with that. I'm not even diminishing that. I, I don't think you can necessarily compare both like knowledge and labor based fields, but I can attest to the fact that this is very mentally tasked. And I'm pretty sure that anyone out there who is a knowledge worker knows that this job or these jobs are very mentally tasked. And like you spend days in front of a computer and practically everything you're doing is based on your brain and your knowledge. Like you're thinking of things, you're trying to solve problems, you're trying to write code, you're trying to respond to incidents, you're trying to build processes, you're reviewing documents. It's very, very like knowledge and brain intensive, like very mentally tasking, which is why I think, you know, everyone should, you know, sort of consider doing something outside of this that's not mentally tasking, like go outside, go to the gym. Like these days I, you know, take walks around my, you know, my community, like 20, 30, minutes just walk in you know like sometimes i mean i go to the gym pretty regularly three four five times a week because i i need something to get me out of out of the front of my computer out of this office because if i don't like i'm not gonna lie i feel like just doing this for like every single day and not taking breaks not even taking breaks like just taking 30 minutes to just take a step out or an hour to go to the gym will drive you crazy because you're just freaking like putting your brain on overdrive every single freaking day now it's great because like you know of course you're exercising your brain which i love like i 
I appreciate the fact that I'm able to like work based on my knowledge and my brain. But if you don't step out, if you don't like take like I, I spend like eight hours at a, at a time in front of my computer and then go take like a 30 minute walk outside or go to the gym, come back, you know, have some dinner and then get back to my front of my computer. If I'm doing it straight like 12, 13, 14 hours, that's going to drive me crazy. Like, especially if it's like over and over and over again. Of course, there are days where like something comes up, like something major or you, you just have to pull long hours. Like, you know, for, for instance, like, yeah, I don't mind doing that. But like, it's not something that you, you, I would do every day or you should do every day. Like, definitely get outside. Previously, I used to do jujitsu. Uh, I used to get me to like, you know, really like be physically active. And I've always, you know, gone to the gym all the time. But now I'm actually trying to lose weight. I've, I've lost like 10 pounds in a couple of last couple of weeks. So I can get back into jujitsu. It's not necessarily a requirement, but I just wanted to get back to a certain weight before I get back into jujitsu, just in case I, I'm also possibly considering competing. But like, I'm looking forward so much to days when I'm going to be done with work and going to train because I miss that so much. It's been a while, but just having something that you're doing that's not like in front of your screen, like your computer screen or even your phone is very helpful, especially given the mentally intensive nature of our jobs. And the final thing I wanted to talk about is the higher the salary, the lower the work life balance. I know this is a bit controversial and I really want people to like, you know, think about this like very pragmatically. Over the course of my career, I've worked as a cybersecurity analyst at, you know, medium sized MSSPs and even a larger sized MSSP working for Fortune 50 to Fortune 500 clients. I've also previously worked at Datadog, which is, you know, pretty big uh, tech company. And I currently work at a, at a fan company. And, you know, I've obviously seen a progression in my salary, you know, over the course of those different jobs. And I can definitely tell you that the more you get paid, the lower your work-life balance. Now, I think this is a bit subjective, right? In some ways, right? And I think work-life balance is what you make it to be, right? Like, I think I have a good work-life harmony. I think balance is typically seen as like perfect work balance, perfect life balance. And I don't necessarily see it as always the same because harmony is more so like, you know, they kind of, harmony is not the same. It's like a sort of like counter balance of some sort. Like if you, if you know about music, I'm a musician. I, I'm actually like somewhat of a, a professional musician, but if you know anything about harmony, if you're singing like, if you have the treble and the alto, they're singing the same thing, but they're kind of countering each other, like harmonizing each other. They work together. They don't necessarily actually balance each other out. They're basically countering each other with different notes that are kind of coming together to form and harmony. And then you add like, you know, a tenor, a bass, and you know, all of it just come together. Well, none of them are balancing each other. They're actually countering each other, but coming together to form this harmony. I think it's more like, I think people these days call it like work life harmony. And like I said, I think work life balance or work life harmony is what you make of it. I have, you know, periods of work or periods of my life where work takes like a super high priority in the sense that I have to focus on what I'm doing at work. I have to focus on like, you know, things related to work because that's what matters to me, right? And I have periods of time where I think I have a very good grip on like, you know, what is going to going on at work. I can kind of like manage that and also equally manage all the personal responsibilities or personal workloads. It fluctuates. It's not always the same, right? I'm not always like perfectly like, you know, like fully ingrained in work and also perfectly fully ingrained in everything else outside of work. Sometimes one thing takes a precedence over the other, which is why it's a harmony, right? So, but I, I, I still think, and I'm still, I still strongly believe that the higher the salary, the higher you pay, the less the balance is between, you know, work and life. I don't think it's necessarily a, a thing that's imposed by companies. I think it's something that is somewhat psychological, but also comes with the roles. Like if you're dealing with, you know, a role that is, you know, of significantly large scale where you have like, you know, a really large customer or you work for a pretty large conglomerate or a pretty large, you know, Fortune 50, Fortune 500 company, the stakes are much higher. And I think that that definitely puts some pressure on the individual to like make sure like, you know, you, you have this, you have the, you're always skilled up to face the challenges you're going to face, you know, each and every day. And when major things happen, you know, you're basically somewhat responsible for, you know, like solving those problems, fixing those issues. Like I'm a response engineer. So if there's a major incident, I'm responsible for sometimes, you know, staying a bit later than typical to make sure like some things get resolved because like this has a lot of impact to the people that we're trying to serve as an organization. I think I've said enough about that, but I, I just want to make this really like unscripted video, talk about like some actual realities of being a cybersecurity engineer that a lot of people don't really talk about. Regardless, I think ultimately if you find passion and fulfillment in what you do, like all of these things are not going to be negative things for you, right? Like you're going to more so find fulfillment and passion in what you do. And the more fulfillment and passion you find in what you, what you do, the less you see certain things as negative. So sometimes you see those positives. And I think the more that is for you, like the better you're going
going to be at your job, the better you're going to also be able to manage things, you know, in regards to like your life and other things like that. So I think just like I said, work life balance or work life harmony is, is what you make of it. And you know, you basically have the autonomy over your time to do what you want to do. And you're responsible for making sure that things are done when they're supposed to be done. You cut out distractions and just basically like find a good harmony between work and you know other things that being said if you want to learn more about other truths about being a cybersecurity engineer like salaries including my own salary uh, when i first got into the industry definitely check out this video on the right of the screen and on the other hand if you want to learn more about how to actually do some cybersecurity engineering work like some devsecops check out this video where i go through how to properly secure container images by duckerizing a python application that being said i'll see you in the next video Bye bye